to all but one of the possible tide problems that you're going to get are going to be in this book. The one that you cannot find, uh, we'll show you how to get it. There will be some 83 government publications at the test. There's just not enough for everybody to go grab one. All right? But only a couple of you are going to get the plot with that Boulevard Roads, Texas on it that's not in here. And then you can just go over and grab a government book, 83, and do it out of there. It's just one page that we didn't bother putting in here. Okay, when you're doing tides, you have to understand that everything is based on, usually we, everything's based on somebody else's tide. We have two types of stations. We have reference stations and subordinate stations. A reference station, there are only a few of around. In this area, we use Tampa Bay Entrance as a reference station, and almost every tide figured on the west coast of Florida is based on that reference station. You know what the tides are at Tampa Bay, and by finding out how long it's going to take for that tide to catch up down in Sarasota or up at the north end of the bay, we can add or subtract time from the reference station to get the tides at the place that you're at. Okay? So you have to keep uh, correcting for time, and there are also some height differences because the tide that comes into Tampa Bay at 12 o'clock noon is going to take another hour and a half until all that water flushes up to the north end of the bay. Okay? So you've got time differences. Sometimes it gets a place quicker. You add some time, you subtract time, you add feet, uh, depth of water, you subtract depth of water. For sure. Um, take a look at the book. Everybody notice that there are this one here, there are three different tables. Starting up at the front, we have the reference stations. These are tides that you base everything else on. Right in its table one at the top. I'm looking at page 100, it says Savannah, Georgia. Probably all of the Georgia coastline is based on Savannah's tides. Okay, now if you follow with me and go a little bit farther back in the book, there's another about page 200, 204, is a different type of table. It's called table two. At the top of it, it says time, uh, title differences and other constants. Okay, that's table two. Then if you spin back the page just past table two, page 239 is table three. Thank you. Looks like this. This is a single page. We put two of them in the reprint, but it's a single page. Right. We're going to have 239, right. We're going to have to work through all of these and do everything a little backwards. The first thing you do, everybody got one of these forms in front of them? Got one up here on the board? Take a look at it. It has a place for the substation. That's where we're looking to calculate the tides for. In this case, we're going to use New Haven City Docks in Connecticut. Alright, that's our substation. Everybody put that in on their form. The date that we are going to use for this particular practice problem is February 23rd, 1983. And the time that we're going to reference is 17.50 Eastern Standard Time. Now we will be dealing with, later on in this, daylight times, which is just a simple calculation of subtracting an hour from the daylight time to convert it back to a standard time. Now, first thing that you would always do is look up in the index the substation, the place that you're actually trying to calculate the tides for, in this case, New Haven. Everybody look up New Haven in the index, in the back of the book. And there will be a four-digit number, not a page number, but what we're going to call a reference number in the index. Well, this is the index in the back of the book. Looked it up, you should find has a reference number of 1227. In your form right here that I wrote over, the little RN, and that's where you ought to write your 1227, just so you can keep track of it as you're working through the problem. 
First thing you do with any one of them is look up and get a reference number. This refers to table two. You get behind, stop. All right. Then flip forward in your book until you hit table two. The reference number that they are referring to is the column one number. And it's a numerical order from about 100 on to 5,000. Sit right here. Turn the pages until you find the 1227 in that first column. In this case, it's uh, page 211. It's the first. Right up Okay. Now, when you find that, take a straight edge piece of paper and draw a line straight across it so you don't misread any of these numbers. Line it up to 1227. Draw yourself a pencil line right in the book all the way across, so you're going to read the right numbers. The biggest problem with doing ties is that people write down the wrong numbers out of the book. They just, their eyes go somewhere else and they pick up the wrong number. Okay, everybody found that? Now go to the top of the page with me. Everybody on page uh, 211. At the top of the page defines what all those columns indicate. The first two columns, the first two columns we have here are latitude and longitude, totally unimportant to you. Don't need to mess with it at all. The next four columns are very important. These are our time differences and our height differences. Okay. Uh, the first column, the first two columns in there say time, the high water time difference, and then you have a low water time difference. Then a height of high water and a height of low water. What this all means is they're not telling you the depth of the water or the time. They're telling you how much time you have to add or subtract from the reference station, which we haven't determined yet, which we will in a minute. If you know that at the reference station at 12 o'clock it's a high tide, then here it would say that we would have to subtract three minutes from that time to correct for New Haven. Right? It's just how much you're going to add or subtract from the reference station, which in this case is going to end up being Bridgeport. Okay. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. sure about three? Three minutes? No, that's low water. The high water is plus two minutes. Okay. The next set of columns over says the range of the tide. And you've got the mean range and the spring range. And you're not uh, interested in this at all for calculating tides like we're going to do here. Also, the mean tidal level is unimportant to you for doing these type of calculations. They're used for something slightly different. Okay. Looking at your form, the first thing that you always want to do is just write down the time differences, not worry about what you do with them. Just put them all down. On your form, at the top here, talks about time differences. It says time of high water, time of low water, height of high water, and height of low water. Just so you remember to put them down, okay? So what we want to do is just copy straight out of the book from the left to the right, from the top to the bottom. A little confusing. The uh, high water time difference, which is in your first column of your book, says plus zero, zero, two, which means add two minutes. The next column over says minus zero, zero, three for our low water time correction. Then we get into the height correction of high water. It says minus zero point seven feet. Next column across says the low water correction is zero point zero. So all we've done is taken the information out of the book, write it down so that we don't have to keep turning back and forth in the book to refer this information. All right, now, the reference station. Where do you find that? At this point, where you have taken your information, your time differences, you slide your finger right up that column to the first place that says on so-and-so, this case, Bridgeport, page 48. That is your reference station. That is that New Haven's tides are based on Bridgeport. To keep from forgetting that, right in here where it says reference station, Bridgeport. And throw the page number in. All right, now, you've got to be real careful with the page numbers. The page number they give you, that doesn't take you necessarily to the month that you want. It takes you into January. All right, at this point, everybody look up. Bridgeport, page 48, in your book.
be real careful to make sure you get the right month in there. First two columns are January, second two columns are February. We're looking for the 26th. I'm sorry, I screwed this up. Let's make this the 26th so we all work in the same numbers here. Okay, find the 26th, circle it in the book so that you don't accidentally let your eyes wander into a different day. At the top of that column, let's define what we're looking at. The first column has the day. That is the date and the day of the week. The second column is your time in hours and minutes. The third column is the height in feet. And the fourth column is the height in meters. We will never use the height in meters. We deal in feet in the United States. Okay. We're looking at 26, yes, we're looking at the 26th. I had the 23rd written up. There. Okay, now, forgetting about the last column there, we have a tide that is at 3.58. It says minus 0 0.9 feet. First thing you have to do is determine whether that tide you're looking at is a high tide or a low tide. Now, with the form here, we have logged in low water, high water, low water, high water. It doesn't mean that the first tide of the day is always going to be a low water. It's just the way the form's laid out. So you have to, right off the bat, before you go into here, determine is the first tide of the day a high tide or a low tide. Only way to do that is compare it to the second tide of the day. First tide is minus 0.9 feet. The second tide of the day is 7.5 feet. So what's the first tide, a high or a low? low? It's a low, so we want to make sure we plug that in the low water slot. Could very, just as easy have been a high water. Want to be careful with that. And all you're simply going to do is write down the information right out of the book. We have a low water of 0,358. The height of that tide you put over here is a minus 0 0.9 feet. Second tide of the day is a 1011, and its height is 7. Point five. They won't use a plus sign if it's a plus tide. 1633 for the third, and it is a minus 1.3 foot. And the last tide of that particular day is 2239, and it is a 7.1 foot on the plus side. So all we've done so far is just copy the information right out of the book. All right, everybody got to that point. Now what we're going to have to do, reference station, we have that indicated as Bridgeport. So these are the tides at Bridgeport. We're not at Bridgeport. Our tides are somewhat different. This is the difference between what we have here and what we're looking for, New Haven City docks, these are the differences that we're going to have to apply. So really all we're doing is we're going to take these tides, do this to it, add or subtract a little time, add or subtract a little height, and write them down over here so that now we have a set of corrected tides for New Haven City docks. Example, the first time, and I suggest you do all the times and then go back and do all the heights so that you don't get yourself mixed up. We have a low of uh, 0358, that's a low water. We're dealing with time corrections. The fact is that these two here apply to correcting the time, and these two corrections correct the heights using the appropriate high or low. Okay? We're going to do all our times first. First time is a low water. So time of low water, subtract three minutes from it. Tell you, throw in 003. One little point here I want you all to watch. It's not real important here, but it's real important anytime you add and subtract time. How many minutes in an hour? Sounds like a dumb question, right? When we add and subtract normally, we're adding and subtracting in tens and hundreds, right? Not in sixties. Each hour represents sixty minutes, not a hundred. What we have to be very careful is when you're borrowing, carrying back and forth, that you don't borrow ten, you borrow a whole sixty minutes or you carry 60s instead of carrying 10s or 6s. The easiest way to keep from doing that is to always, when you set up your little addition or subtraction problem, always draw a line between your hours and minutes and do the minutes first and then do the hours. Okay? In this case, we're just subtracting a little number from there, so we shouldn't have any problem at all. 3 from 58 gives us 55, and then 0, we have a corrected time of 3.55. This Correct it over, write it down 
on your substation. We're done the first one. The next time of the day that we have is a high water. It's at 10:11, and high water correction. Look up here. It says add two minutes to it. Draw the line between them. Just general principle. Don't forget to do that. We have a corrected time of 10:13. Plug it in over here. And what we're looking to do is every one of them that we have available to us. The 16:33 is a low water. A low water correction minus three minutes. Really don't have to even bother writing that one out. 16:30 corrected. All right, just sort of follow with me on this one. Next, last of the day is a 22.39. That's a high water, a high water correction. Add two minutes to it. 22.41 and write it in. Now, are those times over there under our reference station important to us anymore? Do we need them? No, we don't need them. Why? Because now we know what New Haven's tides are. So this information here is obsolete. Not needed anymore. Only thing we needed it for was to work this out. Now we have our substation and we forget about it. Now we have to correct our heights. Different areas, the water rises and falls slightly different. So in this case, where we have a minus nine-tenths of a foot tide on low water, Low water correction says do nothing to it. So anytime you do zero to something, you just carry it over, right? So that plus zero is still going to give me minus 0 0.9. The next one of the day is the 7.5 foot on the plus side, high tide. Here it says subtract 7 tenths from it. So do so. Hmm. All right, we got the 7.5, and we're going to minus 7. 7. 0. 0.7 from it. As you 6.8, and write it in. It's taking a little bit of height away from that one. The next one is a 1.3, and it happens to be a low water. Again, we refer back to this one, and it says do nothing to it, so we just carry it over, minus 1.3. High tide of 7.1. High tides we're going to subtract 7 tenths from, giving us an answer of 6.4. All right, now, this information, is it any importance to us anymore? No, this is all garbage right here. Useless to us except to confuse you. So always cross it out when you're done converting it all over so you know that there's no reason in the world to refer back to it again. All right, now actually we haven't done a whole lot of anything yet as far as calculating the tides go. The part down at the bottom is where we deal with trying to find out the specifics. Now, we're looking for a desired time of 1750. That's the time we're trying to calculate what exactly the tide is. Looking at these times here, what times there might have some effect on the height of the tide at 17.50. Would a 3.55 in the morning have any effect on us when we're looking for 17.50? No, that one's many hours away. How about the 10.13? That's one tide change away, right? Our 17.50 tide, or time, is going to fall right in here. After 16.30 but before 2241, right in the middle of those two tides. So those are the only two that are important to us here. This little group of four numbers, the two times and the two heights, the only thing that we'll have to deal with. Let me fix this up so you can see it. Okay. That's the first thing you always determine. After you've corrected them, which two bracket your desired time? They're the only two that count. Okay. So everything else on that piece of paper is garbage except for these four numbers. And we've gone through that whole thing just to get those four numbers. Make sense so far?
All we're doing is converting a little time and a little uh, whatever. Okay, now that we have our reference station taken care of, we determine which four numbers or two tides bracket our desired time. We have to deal with this bit of information. Now, I want you all to turn to table three in your book so that you don't have to rely on this form to understand what elements you need here because all of this on the form comes right out of the book. You really don't even need a form except to walk you through it the first couple of times just to get the hang of it. Page 239 in your book. Table three is only one of these pages. Those are duplicate pages, so when one gets marked up, you can get around it. Everybody take a look at the top of the page. It says, the time from the nearest high or low water. That's the question. Take a look at the form. Time from the nearest high tide, the nearest tide, high or low water. Okay? Off to the left-hand side of the sheet, it says duration of rise and fall. Here, it says duration of rise and fall. Okay? This is a four-part form. Down here, a little bit farther down on the left-hand side, it says, what's the range of the tide? Question, what's the range of the tide found right here? Okay? And then right here in the middle <coughs> is where your height correction is. This is the number that we're doing all of this work for, just to get this one single number so that we can figure what the height of the tide is at this particular time. And that's your correction, which we refer to here, correction from table three, add or subtract it, depending on what we get. Okay? The only thing that you don't find here as an element of this table that you do need is what is the height of the nearest tide. Because anytime you get a correction, you only want to apply it to that tide which is closest to you. So after we get all done, we're going to have to figure out which one of these two times is closest to us to apply it to. And by looking at it real quickly, knowing that we're dealing with a 1750 desired time, it's most likely going to be 1630. That's just a hair over an hour, where this one here is a couple of hours away. Okay. Now, we can refer back to the form here a little bit. We don't need the books at this point until you work out these elements. Forgetting about everything else on here, in fact, let's just, uh, let's just scratch this out as well so that we're not confused anymore. I only got one number to deal with. Desired time, 1750. Duration of rise and fall. Anytime they ask you a question like that, they're not asking you about all the tides of the day, just these two tides of the day. Duration meaning time duration. Question really says, how much time is it between high water and low water? So how are we going to find the time difference? Anybody? You subtract the little one from the big one. All right. So what we have is a time of 2241, and we need to subtract 1630 from it. And get ourselves, everybody do this. I want to let you do this. You got to practice it one time. All right. All right, 30 from 41, there's no problem with. You didn't even have to carry it over. So that is the duration of rise and fall, time duration. Probably wouldn't even want to put a six there, a zero. Six hours, 11 minutes. Okay, now. Time from the nearest tide. Well, that's not a real complete question. What they're looking for is, which is the nearest tide, and how close are you from that nearest tide? So right off the eyeball, we've already determined that we're probably a lot closer to 1630 than we are to 2241. So what do you do? Take your 1750 desired time, subtract 1630 from it, Come up with an hour and 20 minutes. That's how far we are from our nearest tide. Hour and 20 minutes away. Plug that in here. <coughs> okay, now the trick comes up in figuring the range of a tide. Simple definition of the range of the tide is the total amount of change from high tide to low tide. How many feet of water change from a high to a low tide? Now, if we know that we have on our high tide 6.4 foot, what does that mean? 6.4 foot to the bottom? No, that means 6.4 foot above 
average or mean low water, all right, which is an average of all the low waters for the past 19 years, mean low. All the charted depths on your charts, the soundings, are all based on so many feet at mean low water. Okay, so if it says 12 foot on the chart, and we have a plus 6.4 foot, that means you have 18.4 foot of water at that time. If it says minus 1.3 feet, that would be 1.3 foot less than the charted depth or mean low water. So what we're doing is we're coming from 1.3 foot below zero up to 6.4 foot above zero. All right, range is the combined change. The best way I can think of to deal with this and show you, and this also works out very well when you get stumped and you're not real sure what you're dealing with for range, is to draw yourself out a little graph just so you can visualize what's happening. Let's say that this point right here is zero, which we'll call mean low water. There are a couple areas in the United States where you use something different, but for the Coast Guard testing, this is all they're going to deal with. We have a low tide indicated of, say down here, of minus 1.3 feet. And from there up to zero, we got 1.3 foot worth of change, right? Not minus or plus, just 1.3 foot worth of change. Our high tide is up here somewhere at 6.4 feet. So from here down to zero, we have 6.4 foot of change. How much change do we have all together? 7.7. We're going to add the two together, right? The so 6.4 from here to here plus the 1.3 feet, add them together, come up with a total range of 7.7 .7 feet. Okay, now, as not to confuse you, let's write down that 7.7 .7 feet in the form and then talk about one other little thing that could happen and will happen in a lot of the other problems that you might work. What happened if this was, was not a minus 1.3 but was a plus 1.3? This would screw it all up for you. Say that we had a high tide of 6.4 and we had here a low tide of 1.3 foot, but it didn't go all the way down to zero. Now those are the same numbers without the minus sign here both on the plus side. If you were going from here all the way down to zero, that would be 6.4 foot worth of change. But we're not. We're going down to there less than 1.3 feet. So we're really only changing this much, not the whole 6.4. The easiest way to do that then would be obviously that we're going to have to subtract that and go 6.4 minus the 1.3 giving us an answer of 5 point something. Okay. Maybe an easy way to look at this, it might confuse you in other areas, but if they're both on the plus side, we are subtracting one from the other, right? The signs are the same, they're both pluses, you take the little one from the big one. If the signs are different, like they were down here at the minus 1.3, we're going to take this plus this. If the signs, one's a plus tide and one's a minus tide, you're going to have to add the two together to get range. If they're both above zero, then to get the total difference or total change, you're going to have to subtract them. That's kind of hard to remember. Sometimes it's easier just to draw yourself a little picture on the side of your scratch paper and mark it in so you can visualize what you're doing. That way it'll never fail you and you won't come up making stupid mistakes when it really counts. Okay. Now. Height of the nearest tide. Which one of those two tides that we say we are nearest to? We've already determined this. We're closer to 1630. What is its height? 7.1. No, no, that's the range. Its height by itself is a minus 1.3 foot. That's the one we're going to correct off of because that's the one we're closest to. Okay. Now what we need to do, since we have the information needed, to go into the corrections from table three to get the number that we need to use to correct with. All right? So everybody go to table three in your book. All right, take your choice on pages. Use something that has a straight edge so you can read across it. Now, the way that you would want to work this book is always, if possible, start from here. 
then go to here, then down to the range, which will bring you over to your correction table. All right? Take your piece of paper or your form or whatever you're working. The question here is the duration of rise and fall. We have determined that to be 6 hours and 11 minutes. You take this and slide it on up. These numbers off to the side, you're not going to find 6 hours and 11 minutes. You need to find the number closest to it. Either before it or after it doesn't make any difference. But one minute different will count. So which are we closest to, the 6 o'clock or the 6.20? We're one minute closer to 6.20, right? So we're going to use that and take your straight edge and lay it across 6.20. So all these numbers all the way across this sheet line up. Then what you're doing is drawing a line across it. Now at the top it says the time of the nearest tide. We've determined that the time of our nearest tide, based on our form, is an hour and 20 minutes. So what you want to do is slide your finger across this line that you've created here until you find the nearest number to an hour and 20 minutes. Slide it across. The closest thing to it is about either you've got an hour and 16 minutes or an hour and 29 minutes. Oh, hour and 16 minutes is four minutes away. Hour and 29 minutes, nine minutes away. So we're going to have to go 116. The number is not important to you. It's the column that that number is in. So put a pencil mark in the column at the top of the page that that number falls in. There's the column right here. You're at 620 on the left. And you went over to one hour and 20 minutes, didn't you? 207. Yeah. No, one, you go to 120 in that column, not in the top column. Not on the top. The line that is created by your piece of paper. Like this. Yeah. And these are the okay. numbers right across here that count. Right. Yeah. Okay? So the closest thing is going to be 116. Put a mark in that column. Okay? Now that you've got the column mark, you can move your piece of paper because we did all that just to get the column. Now what do you do? Well, now you go to your range of tide. And here's the range is set up on the outside edge. Our range being 7-7. Seven, seven. We need to find the closest thing to 7-7. Seven, seven. All right? 7-5, seven, 6-7. Seven. That's two tenths away. And 7, 8, 9, 10. That's three tenths. Ooh, 7-5 is closer. By one tenth, isn't it? Okay. Line your piece of paper up across like this. Go on over to that column that you put the mark in at the top of the page and go straight down and read the number that you're projecting with your piece of paper. 0.7. Should be 0.7. That is your correction from table three, and it's written right in here 0.7. That's the number we did all this work for. Seven tenths. That tells us that we have to correct a tide by seven tenths of a foot. The nearest tide. Now, our nearest tide was the low water. Rock bottom. Can you get any lower than low? Yes. Lower than our low tide. Here's a full low tide of 1.3 feet minus. You can't get less than that, right? The tide is never going to get lower. Our time falls after. At 1630 is mean low water. After low tide, what's it start doing? It starts going up again, right? There's no way for it to go anything lower than that. So we're on the way up. How much do we add to it? We're going to add 7 tenths of a foot on the way up. Well, if we were here, and here's zero again, mean low water, and we're down here at a minus 1.3 foot, and we're going to add 7 tenths to it. Is that going to get us up to zero? That's still not going to get us up to zero. We're still going to be below zero using a minus tide. Well, how do we take 1.3 on a below and add 7 tenths to it and come up with a number? If I add 7 tenths, I'm not going to be going this way. I'm going to be going this way. All right, but how about a positive and a negative? Sign of the larger number. Sign of the larger number. All right, I have a plus 7. I need to add to a minus 1.3. The only way to do that is going to be to subtract the two of them. <coughs> All right, going to give me a 0 0.6. Now, is that a plus 0 0.6 or a minus 0 0.6? It's still only going to bring me up to here, 
0 0.6, which is below zero. All right, so I'm ending up down here. If I take this, apply this to it, anytime you take something less than zero, you add something to it, you're going uphill. You're going to end up with a 0 0.6 on the negative side. And that is the answer to the height of the tide at 17. 50, right there. That one's pretty easy to do. They're all about the same. There's only one of them there. They got to back up into the next day uh, to pick up the last tide of the day because you're dealing with like one o'clock in the morning. So you're going to have to pick up the last tide of the day. Other than that, they're pretty standard uh, as far as the procedures, what you do. You get your reference station, you get your time differences where it's your top of your form. You write them down and forget about them for a while. Go into table one, write down your tides for your reference stations. Take that information, apply it to this to get this. Find the two tides that bracket your desired time and go with it. Everything else is garbage. And from there on out, you deal with the questions here until you get to the bottom and you got your answer. All right? And this is all what you need to use to get into table three with. Doesn't get any harder than that. The one thing that you're gonna have to worry about these numbers all worked out real easy where we didn't have to worry about drawing the line and carrying 60 back and forth. But that's where most people make their problem is they forget to draw that line between the hours and minutes and they start borrowing tens. Doesn't work that way. And then your times are all screwed up and no way that your answer can possibly come out even in the ballpark. Okay. Uh, and once you